The sixth KPI is rather a new KPI. It's about harmonization or consolidation of your costing models for your OPEX spend, very specific. Now, the OPEX in my view is defined as something that is recurring, right? And then hear me out when I say this, it could be anything related to your uh, professional services, consulting spend, your services spend, uh, it could be related to your SaaS procurement, it could be your past procurement, anything. And when you analyze the number of variety of costing models here, you will be amazed. To quote few examples, when you source a SaaS platform, you could either have a perpetual license, you could also have a subscriber-based license, you could also have a utilization-based license such as Amazon Web Services, etc. Uh, in part of your consulting world, you could have a uh, time and material based. For example, it could be either a fixed price project. It could also be a resource based project. And in case of delay, you will end up paying more. In coming back to your software world, it could be that you have to pay extra money for overconsumption, etc., etc., etc. Now you understand the complexity I'm trying to highlight here. What I want you to do over the years, maybe the next six months or so, at least try and map out for your OPEX spend which cost model is the most prominent one. It's not a difficult exercise. You just have to see the top spend and then for that particular vendor, just look up for its top three or top four contracts and just start noting down the top cost models what will happen is when you consolidate this information you will understand what kind of exposure you have in your costing when the commodity market cycle or the services market cycle moves up or down it will also help you analyze if a supplier is having for example variety of cost models with your different buyers and try to get more from you when your buyers are not really talking to each other. So as a category management exercise, you have to ask your buyers to come up with only one or two cost models that are mathematically optimized or aligned with your business requirements and your price forecast models. It will be very easy for suppliers to propose a new costing model in each and every exercise, but you must stick to your approved costing model in that manner it's far more easier for you to optimize your spend because you know what cost levers you are pulling in so try to map your cost models in your opex category over the next three to six months or so the next kpi is also a new entrant in this category it's called number of should cost models you have available and in pipeline hear me out on this one when I say should cost model, it is largely a subset of a domain called cost engineering, where you might have seen a couple of examples already. Some teams would call a breakdown of the bomb costing or bill of material costing. So you take a component, you disassemble it, and you mark down cost for each and every segment. It's very popular in the automobile and manufacturing organizations. The second aspect is what we call as a clean sheet analysis, which is loosely connected with the bill of material model. But when the component level wise costs are not available, you try to a certain assembly uh, wise costing. Let me give an example. When you break down a product, you can have a cost of goods or rather the raw material costs. It could be 50%, 60%. Then you are certain how much is the manufacturing cost. Then you are certain how much is the logistics and distribution, R&D, profit expense, etc., etc. When you establish that, and then when you go into the raw material cost, which is let's say 55, 60%, then within that 55, 60%, you try to identify major commodities instead of Components, you go for commodities. So for example, what will be the impact of copper? Is it 60% utilization, aluminum? What are the other commodities, etc.? So I have seen these two uh, kind of models available. The left one, which I describe, is popular at assembly level, components level in manufacturing organization. The right one, which I just described, is very popular in raw material or trading environment when people are purchasing 
commodities. Nevertheless, it's part of what I call as cost engineering or cost intelligence exercise. At any given point of time, whenever your buyers are procuring something, they must have access to these cost engineering models so that they are able to get exactly what is the cost that is associated by procuring of the material, how the cost is arrived at and what are the remaining items such as profits, etc, etc. Let me give you one of the best negotiation uh, that I have been involved previously as my role as buyer. When we were procuring assemblies in one of my ex companies, instead of inviting quotations from the supplier, we used to give them exactly a template just to fill in because we knew all the components that were there in that particular piece of product that we were procuring. All we wanted from the supplier is we know the cost of these 20, 25 items already. Just fill in your profit margin and then give us your quotation. There was no negotiation on the costing. We didn't even need to ask for the prices because there was a regular product all at the cost engineering team feeding us the prices by checking out in the market what is the cost component level prices. This is where we want to be. This is what the cost engineering should look like. Now, if you don't have that discipline established today, try to pick simpler categories where the data is available. You don't need to make this as a really complicated exercise. You don't need to just attempt, let's say, uh, take the highest value product of largest complexity in trend, try to address it. Start where the data is available because from the learning I can tell you it's easier to get started but to keep that clean sheet or bill of material model refreshed, it's an ongoing exercise. You need a recurring process to make sure that happens. One of my other learning has been is just not limited to your physical products. You can also do this in any kind of consulting activities as well. When you're able to benchmark, for example, what are the resources, rate cards in particular geography for a particular skill set available, you can pre-populate that and ask suppliers to just add their margins on top of it. And I'm talking about a very niche expertise here. So you need to invest time in building these should cost model, clean sheet exercise model for your categories. Measure it in terms of what percentage of your spend is covered or what percentage of your category is covered. Irrespective, have this KPI for your next age procurement center of excellence.